and the by a canepen moon or so, and no bossing kita, Dalon Linen Kunsine, a solar any fine and many rapo, as one great body as yellow. All right, two nine in Rapu, you have finished up Wabo, Chief Dan Olasi, um, overlay four Puru, an interview media, an interview media will be four Puba stomacher, his lip lie on sit at home and a solid docobo, gain to a form of mock in your beef. Is sleep lie and the man in aya ni mezu garaga of visit by onyendu a mazi nam de kano na dss custody a water go in a nam by the kataroka of mofma august give a mazin nan kano guaria so ma atakun does take your time and the listening to our father he have a very big message to pass to be a friends stating from the beginning to the end you will not regret Iman regret if you may watch here before all right um over to you chief dan over to you sir recently there was this uh, viral video we surfaced on the social media space uh, talking about uh, asari dokubo and the comments he made about the southeast people the Igbos people in fact in that uh, video he was brandishing an ak-47 rifle and threatening to kill all the Igbo people saying that if he even had opportunity, he would have still been selling them into slavery like his father's did. I don't know what you make of that comment. Well, I must say that after eight years of uh, Buhari's presidential apprenticeship, that, you know, emphasized or rather spread, you know, an epidemic of dishonest misinformation that became traumatic for most Nigerians. We're entering into another episode of APC unregulated as it were you know pronouncements through surrogates I would not have wasted my time talking on Asari Dokubo or whatever his name if I called his name wrongly may he forgive me uh, but it is where he was coming from Let's man went on a costly call to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria or whomsoever the president designated for him to meet. Where was he making that comment? At the seat of government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, with our coat of arms behind him, with the coat of arms of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the villa behind him, and he round down a whole ethnic population of this country. So, don't you think that it was a, a strategy? It was an approved speech. Why do I say so? Within a space of six weeks, three significant things were happening at the same time. Asari Dokubo was in the villa, running down Igbos. He killed them. They were slaves. And he forgot that he was from Abia State. His grandparents were from Abia State. And they were sold into slavery. In 2020, if you watched another video where he was praising Biafra, that anybody who never believed in Biafra is not a patriot, each time he says such a thing, they give him contract. I hear now they are giving the security contract from Abuja to Kaduna. So that's probably what is out. So on one hand, the president of Nigeria was making an, a man, a Nigerian of Igbo extraction, the chief of naval staff. And everybody was applauding that. And as that one was going on, they sent out uh, uh, Sari Dokubo to run down a whole tribe. It was not enough. In Lagos State, the government of Lagos State was you know, systematically destroying the properties of Igbos at Alaba market. So it's significant things. And the president thinks he's very smart. Give us naval chief of naval staff as if that is the means of livelihood, but go on to destroy the integrity, the ultimate integrity of the Igbo man. You know, there's nothing our people appreciate than our honor, the hard work we put to make this country a successful place, to make this country one. I doubt with the humility, if any other tribe has made as much compromise in terms of human-to-human -human relationship that liberals have done. Look, check of all the presidents or governors in this country. Only Dr. Namde has the as president of this country, oh, no, uh, non-executive president of Nigeria. Do you know whom his chief of, I mean, uh, his uh, ADC was? ADC is the closest security person to any top government official. Moratala Mohammed. Captain Moratala Mohammed was the ADC to Namde Azikiwe. No other leader in this country. He would not only get a person from his ethnic group, if it's possible, from his village. 
the Hebrews have shown unsurpassed devotion to public duty. And we get this. A few years ago, the Oba of Lagos said, because Hebrews in Lagos voted for a Yoruba man that was not of their own approval, that we should drown in the lagoon. And as of today, neither the Lagos state government, nor the pres now president of Nigeria, or Buhari's government, had made a comment that a whole tribe should perish in the lagoon. And you're talking of unity, love. Where is it? Where is it? I suppose we have been very foolish to leave our environment, go to other places, develop them out of love, to make money too, civilize people. Because we go to places, build houses, and they see that it's good, good to live a lot better than you know, they found themselves initially. And I have said here, some four or five months ago, how the Sultanate wanted to jail Amadi Bello. In 1937, after he ran for the Sultanate against the grandfather of the present Sultan, they sued him to court in Guzo Magistrate Court for the, uh, for the non payment of tax. Igbos contributed money. Eight Igbos, including my late father. Eight Igbos contributed two, two pounds in 1937. Went to Lagos and got uh, uh, Heshua Davis. And uh, some went on and brought uh, Ebuna. And they came to uh, Guzo Magistrate Court and made sure that Amadou Bolo was discharged. That was how finally they made him Sardona Sokoto and entered into politics. That gave rise to the alliance between NCNC and NPC that lasted for more than half a century. Tell me, what else can Igbos do in this country to show love of country, to show love of fellow citizens? At each turn, we receive condemnation. It is even more, you know, so painful that the person condemning us will should die, they will should kill us. It's an Igbo boy in the name of Asari Dokubo. And he does not see why Nam Dekano should be released. So I, uh, Uncle, I find it very painful even to discuss the matter. Mm. But like I warned, uh, or rather I advised Buhari's government, and I advised Tinebu because I know him one-on-one. -on -one. When I was chairman of NRC, he was a senator. I met him severally. I will advise him in his own interest, interest of this country, and for the love of this country, that they should release in Nam Dekano. Buhari said, let the legal process take its course. The legal process has taken its course. The Court of Appeals, second highest court in this land, has discharged him. And they are still holding him. I pray that nothing happens to that boy in prison. Uh. That he does not die in prison. If he does, they can call it an advice. They can call it a threat. The situation will not be the same in this country. I pray and I hope Tinubu is smart enough. Not to be a Buhari. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, just to take you back to what you said earlier, because it, it would not be right, really, to conclude that uh, probably Asari has been sent by anyone, you know, to say what he's saying. Because um, investigation into the first time that video was made showed that it, it appeared on YouTube on the 1st of October 2022. So it only re resurfaced again as a viral video after his visit to to the villa, you know, where he talked about how many uh, how mili military are, are involved in you know pipeline and I mean oil theft in the country. So it may not be right to say someone sent him, and you know that investigation shows that he was actually reacting to a statement, um, which he said uh, some people uh, made some statement about him, the Igbo people, you know, uh, people who are supporting the LP candidate at the time. It's what is significant, whether anybody sent him or not, he made that statement in the seat of government. The properties of uh, the hybridization of uh, how or what happened before he made it, it's no more important. If you look at where he was sitting down, he wasn't sitting in his private sitting room, or as I'm here in, on this table with AIT, he was sitting at the executive seat of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria with our coat of arms behind him. I couldn't be bothered whether it was that, uh, a President Tenibu or Buhari. What is important, that he that had the audacity of purpose to sit on the table of the federal government, as it were. The ill treatment of people in the Delta, uh, Niger Delta, which most parts of the Southeast are also part of the Niger Delta. He wasn't complaining. Systematically, he zeroed in on the Igbos. 
which was one of them, or which is still one of them, whether he liked it or not. So what could have led to such deep-seated, you know, uh, hatred for the Igbo uh, people uh, from the statements he is he's making? Uh, because uh, he also alluded to the fact that, you know, uh, during the support for the LP, uh, those are called uh, uh, ob uh, obedient movement claimed that they held a, a two million man march or rally for the LP candidates and then uh, that uh, he believes it was a lie. But is that enough, really? for someone to condemn an entire ethnic group you know this is why you remember during my 30 minutes program on this platform making my tribute for my good friend raymond dobesi i said 32 years ago when raymond dobesi came was running for the presidency of this country he came to anambra i was chairman of the national republican convention and he said something he as it were castigated the Igbos. The delegates he met say, Look at you people. Today you are complaining of uh, minorities, the Yorubas, House of Fulani. And some people jumped up, wanted to attack him. I said, No, let's listen to him. He said, Look at yourself. For every gift God has given to people anywhere in this country, the Igbos have the best of it. If you had governors, five governors who are Igbos, 10 years they will turn this place into London or any other place in the world. You don't need Nigeria to be what you are because you don't have leadership. After Raymond Dobbs said that, we contributed 22,000 plus and said, put petrol in your car. Nobody in Anambra ever forgot that. It was top news in this country 32 years ago. So I'm not blaming Asari Dokubo for what he said. I will blame ourselves for lack of leadership. Today we have two APC governments, one Labour, one APGA, one PDP. Hardly do they talk to themselves, but they are our leaders. So we also have internal problems, which, you know, I'm discussing with top-level Igbos in both parties. How do we begin to sort out our problem? Because we have to sort it out, at least for the defense of our own people who are helpless. People are being uh, slide, their nose are being slide. You see it in social media. That's where we have degenerated. And if you remember, I, four years ago, I warned on this platform that Nigeria is gradually falling into Afghanistan. We're even worse than Afghanistan now. Because every day, 10, 20, 40 people are killed in different places in this country. It's worse than in Southern Kaduna and Plateau State, not to talk of Benue. Is that the way we live? And this president is now telling us how difficult it was to rule Nigeria. He didn't know that for the eight years he was jumping around the world with our presidential jet. When you don't have a vision to put Nigeria back more than 20 years, you know, how should or why should Asari Dokubo complain of Labour? I'm not a Labour Party. I don't have any sympathies for anybody. I'm a PD person, and I thought by my calculation it was easier for the Igbos to come into limelight. That was Akwemez's belief. That was Ojuku's belief. That we start, because of this hatred, which you are now seeing all over the place, let us go stage by stage. Akweme was vice president, and we were right in power, right in the corridor of it. P2B was vice presidential candidate to Atiku Abubakar. If he was again vice presidential candidate this time around, PDP would have been in government. It would have been the easiest point by the grace of God for us to see power. By the time anybody woke up in the morning, we'll be in power. And help the, in, if the unfortunate thing about it is that even when Igbos will be are in power, other people will profit, not Igbos. Our people are not used to government projects. We are self-indulging people. We develop ourselves industrially, you know. So, for anybody to say that uh, because people supported Peter, therefore they should be murdered, why? Everybody has a right to support any candidate. I lost my word. I lost my local government to Peter, which never happened before. That was the choice of my people. Many governors lost their words. That was the choice. He both voted because they felt a, a, a form of exclusion. Let us throw this vote, they will get lost. And they have thrown the vote. I don't know what they call it. The tribunals will say, that's a different kettle of fish. Uh, it is uh, sub I won't comment on that. But I don't know how it's going to go. So people have a right. This APC that is talking to the best of my life, they probably won about five or six states in this country. Every other thing was rigged. Every other thing was rigged. They probably won only Oyo, Ekiti, Kwara, Bronu, and one other place. I'm telling you, PDP won more than 80% of what is now northern Nigeria. 
APC, PD, uh, Labour won Lagos and so many other places. Only INEC knew how they were able to manipulate this. But the case is in tribunal now, so we'll see how it goes. But I pray God that this country, it's a beautiful country, I must tell you. Yeah. Beautiful country. If honest people, like the Bible says, the poor rejoices when the righteous is in power. But unfortunately, the righteous have to be in power first before the poor will rejoice. Would they allow the righteous to come to power? They will not. All right, so we'll come to some of the factors, you know, that uh, seems to be impeding that aspect of politics or an evil man getting into power when we come back from this short break. Thank you so much for staying with us. We are still talking about uh, some of the uh, comments coming from certain quarters against the Igbo people, uh, people from the southeast region of the country, and then looking at the political future of that particular region. Chief Dan Olas is still very much with us in the studio from a PDP chairman in Anambra State. Okay, Chief, before we went on that short break, we were talking about uh, some of the issues that are happening with Igbos. Now, during the election, Igbos were said to have voted more for the LP candidates may be probably voting for their own or believing that this is the right time for an Igbo man to get into power. But then some Igbo people also kicked against uh, the emergence of the LP leader. And many people are saying the Igbos may actually be the architect of their own problem when it comes to governance in the country. I will reply that question with uh, a biblical comment. It's if you read First Corinthians 8 verse 11, it says, if, be silent, if the words you will offer will offend a weaker person or destroy a weaker person. But you don't need to be com uh, silent completely all the time. Because that will be complicit if you don't speak of evil when you see it. I think that's the summary of our problem in this country. When we were speaking before the break, I did say, you know, that we were in the same party with uh, Peter B. Bright young man, you know. Eight years, 2019, he was a vice presidential candidate to Atiko. And we were, when Atiko declared for presidency this time around, he was there. He took up the microphone and paid glowing tributes. He was one of the greatest unifiers in this country. He said so. But he had the right to do what he did. But whether that was an advantage to our people or not, history we judge. He has the constitutional right to do what he did. Most Igbos were apprehensive, behaved the way they did because of Buhari's treatment of our people. Buhari, for him, Igbos never existed. Unfortunately, eight years, not just Igbos, the whole of former Eastern region never existed. And he couldn't be bothered. The dots in a hole, he referred to them at some point. Yes. So it's difficult to know why such attitudes. But I have read a lot of northerners who believed that without Igbos, Igbos are not gods, they are not angelic, but they are hardworking people and we offer an apologies to anybody. Look, Nkoli, my father went to Kano in 1933 as a very young man. With a Kano, a lot of uh, people went there to make a living. They trade in one thing or the other. They bring in things, build houses. We built virtually the first secondary school in Kano by Igbo State Union. My father was the last chairman of NCNC in Kaduna before the Civil War started. He was the last president of Igbo State Union in northern Nigeria. We loved this country. That we were calling Igbos in the north, Hausa Igbos. And we couldn't be bothered. Most Igbos married hundreds of northerners. If you come to my house in my town, the next compound, my late uncle, he married a Sokoto woman by 1960. They now have great grandchildren. Beautiful people. And we love them. So well, sometimes you start to wonder why this hatred? Why this hatred? You can't explain it. And people are here telling you of love, unity. And that was what I said in one program here. Wasn't Buhari, I mean, what's his name? Uh, former head of state, uh, General Yakub Gowan, right when he said that there was no basis for Nigerian unity. That's what comes to my mind. That that one was a spiritual statement. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through him. 
and look now, not only the Igbos, look at what is happening in the Northwest. Even people who have held power for more than 30 years, the Northwest, they are killing people on a daily basis. Boko Haram is there. They have named a new one, Bandit. They are killing people in Plateau, killing people in Benue. It's now a killing field. And they are talking of national unity. Nobody is addressing any issues. And you know, what I normally tell my friends, wherever you see conflict, serious conflict, continuous conflict, it's as a result of unresolved problems. Unresolved problems people refuse to put into dialogue. And you know why I'm worried? And I want to say this seriously. And I want Nigerians to listen. Before my friend, Dr. Junaidu Mohammed died, we were all, 1978-79, we were all with Malam Amin Okano in PRV. We, didn't, we weren't in MPP. Myself, as young as I was then, uh, Uche Chukumeri is late. Professor Shino Achebe late. Was our brain trust in uh, PRP. Doctor, late Dr. Otto Wonko. Late Dr. Nkemo Keke. Late Dr. Austin uh, uh, Avalanche of Abagana. A lot of us. Late Dr. Oke Modi, husband of uh, Senator Joy Modi. We're all in PRP. You know, something happened that is giving me so much worry. When Malam Aminu Kano visited the East, we were seeing him off at Enugu Airport. Then he knew it was only Nigeria Airways, and we were waiting. And I, there was something I said. And Malam Aminu Kano, that was the day he made me his special advisor for the whole East. He said, Dan, you know, you know, Ibos can't carry out a revolution. That was why you failed, because you love this country so much. But I, I want to tell you something. Any day you see crisis, blood shedding crisis beginning in the north, know that that is beginning of the end, if it is not controlled. I was discussing with Dr. Junaidu Mohammed two months before he died. This is where we are. And I don't know whether people live in the moon. You see your countrymen and women, children being killed on a daily basis. And nobody's interesting, interested in sitting down to discuss what is the genesis? What was not part of our lifestyle of killing people? Both parts, all parts of this country share this and love life. You know, but now we kill people like if we are killing goats. And it's good news to read in newspapers and television. 40 kills, 30 kills on a daily basis. It tells you something is happening. Where is going to lead us? I don't know. I don't know where it's going to lead us. All right, Chief, but uh, let me ask you this critical question, which many people are also asking on, on the social media space. Uh, do the Igbos also hate themselves, really? And I'm asking this because you just alluded to the fact that Asari Dokubo has an evil origin, uh, which he also admitted in some of the videos he made earlier, before now, talking about his fathers coming from Abia State, settled in Obosi, then went back to uh, uh, the Calabari, or what do you call that place now? So... And by Dalu Lineno, on a Nugoni Fen Payupulu, Dan Urasi, New Lacuqua. Again, keep with the Kipuba stomach, Yabi Feni non to Gasaraka, New Lacuqua. One of Boba stomacher a salad of Cobo, and he straight to Ndibo. Then two while Boba stomacher in doors of Gasuqua, Bo Macamazin and the Gano and the Namank and Dibo. So again, keep with the Kipuba stomacher, Yabi Fe, give your money again. Can give the Kiku Bastamaka Yabi Fre Kabaro K drop or I on the Commission Bureau. Once again, don't forget that this is Eastern News 24. Ever still with Telegosia. Dio Kempa. That don't need a new mochineke. Kemesian.